Okay, so a little bit about my intentions with this quadcopter. Uh, I acquired this one uh, as a practice drone. Uh, so really as a practice drone, my intention is to fly a drone, uh, a quadcopter for off the boat, uh, our boat Cape Star, and to be able to go out and take uh, video footage, uh, do little aerial recons, and, and you know just add photo photography, uh, aerial photography to the to the boating experience. And uh, my brother has a really nice DJI Phantom 4, and we've done that. We've flown it off the boat uh, uh, once. Uh, he uses that for his hovercraft business and uh, to take uh, footage of the hovercraft um, uh, out there on the water. And we've done that several times. And uh, before I want to use his uh, DJI Phantom 4, which is obviously a very expensive drone, uh, I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. Obviously, flying over salt water, uh, if we were to crash the drone into the salt water, that's the end of that. Uh, as you can see here, uh, you know, the, none of this is sealed. You can actually see the little wire windings on the motors and obviously any salt water into that and, and we're done for. Uh, I can speak from personal experience of um, falling off the back of the boat, uh, unfortunately in the marina while we were at the slip, uh, while doing some work I shouldn't have been doing out off the back of the boat. Uh, this was a prior boat that I had and uh, with an iPhone in my pocket and uh, electronics and salt water don't mix. Uh, they, uh, iPhone anyway turns a really cool blue color and gets super hot. So um, at any rate, uh, that's the point of this. So I uh, did some research online, looked at it, and uh, this is a GPS stabilized uh, item. I thought it'd be kind of cool having the Wi-Fi and, and uh, being able to broadcast the signal back. You can get a little bit cheaper one, uh, and it's probably $34 cheaper. Uh, I think that's the Bugs 2C, which doesn't have the Wi-Fi capability uh, to broadcast back to your phone. Um, but uh, as far as just going through the ropes, learning how to control, learning uh, the instruments, uh, the, the control, this is a, a pretty good one to do it. And, and it's going to be very similar in, in form and function to the, uh, the DJI Phantom. Okay, so this is the box it comes in, which um, I don't really intend to get a case for. This box is more than sufficient, I think, uh, with a little bit of TLC. It should last. I get everything in here. I've got a, I went ahead and bought an extra battery. Uh, this one is for the Force One, which this isn't the branding of the same uh, quadcopter. It happens to be white. It was just cheaper. That's why I grabbed it. Um, I don't really care about that too much. Uh, so it fits nicely in here. Here's the quadcopter itself. Uh, so it's a good-looking, you know, Pretty pretty cool looking uh, uh, quadcopter. Got little bug eyes on there. There's the camera up front. Um, it takes a uh, micro SD card, which is right here. It tucks in there pretty good. So you've got to have uh, some fingernails, or you got to kind of uh, eject it out where uh, you know you, you can. There, there. I just uh, popped it out of there. Let me grab that. Uh, so it fits in there quite tight, snugly, and, and it's not easy to get in and out. Whoops got it in there upside down. Uh, let me go ahead and clicks in there. And then when you activate the camera and you can do that through the controller, which is down here or through your phone, um, it's going to start recording um, the video there. It's not super great video, but it's pretty decent uh, uh, 1080. And um, it's not, you know, it's not gimbal stabilized. So it's a little bit herky jerky depending on what the drone is doing, but it's kind of fun to capture some video. It's not bad video. I, I posted some of that so you can take a look at it. Uh, Let's see here, yeah, it's fine right there. And then here's the controller, it tucks into the bottom, tucks in there real nice. So, um, uh, like I say, the package, there's some extra, comes with an extra set of props that are tucked in underneath here. Uh, I went ahead and bought some some uh, orange and black ones. This once again is from Force One, I believe. Same, same darn thing, frankly. I don't know, these orange props make much of a difference. The idea is it you know, helps you uh, uh, tell what direction the drone is. That's one of the nice things with the FPV is when it's up flying uh, with that signal, you can see which way the drone's facing by, by what it's seeing. So you can see where the nose is, where the camera is, and helps you orient it. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's walk through setting uh, the Bugs 2 up. So uh, we've got the quadcopter here. We're going to launch it from our uh, from the deck here. So uh, just got it on a table, and the table kind of represents a uh, small target to hit. So when we're landing on the boat, we want to be able to land in a pretty confined space. Uh, so 
this table kind of recognizes or represents that. So takeoff and landing from the small table. Uh, kind of neat here in that we have the deck and the decks up high. We don't actually have too many uh, things to run into out to the uh, to the front of the deck anyway. The power lines are well down below us. So as long as we don't fall from the sky, uh, we should be relatively okay here. Um, and it's a nice sunny day, so we're going to take advantage of that. All right, so let's go ahead and start up the... Uh, the quadcopter. For, so the first thing we're going to do is slide in the battery that powers up the uh, the quadcopter. There you kind of get. Um, you can see it's doing its initialization process now. Part of that is we need to hook it up to the remote control. So we'll go ahead and fl flip the remote control on here. Got a double beep saying, "Hey, I'm in connection uh, with the uh, bugs." And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, for our FPV uh, camera mode, I'm going to go ahead and um, get our uh, uh, hooked up to the bugs there, so there's the bugs Wi-Fi signal, and we are linking up to that, and then we're going to go find the bugs app here real quick on the phone, and go ahead. And there's going to make the link, and then you can see there's the uh, the the video there. I'll bring this up here so you can see it. So that's what the the quadcopter is seeing. Oop, oh, there we go. I'll just manually fly it by hand, and you can kind of see out there. That's a pretty decent image, and you can see in the uh, in the phone what's going on there. Okay, so. Um, We've gone through our initial, our, our first initialization. I'm going to go ahead and lock the uh, battery compartment here on the uh, the back of the um, uh, the quadcopter. Uh, I think that's pretty important. <laughs> if if uh, you don't want this thing sliding out or coming uh, loose, because obviously uh, that would cause power loss and the quadcopter would fall from the sky like a brick. All right. Uh, so what's going on now? We have these kind of light green uh, flashing lights going on. And that's telling us that it's ready to calibrate the compass. And that's pretty important to do uh, every time you fly this thing is you need to calibrate the compass. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and uh, turn it three times in a horizontal plane. So one, two, three. It doesn't matter which way. It just needs to be uh, a direction. And then, to, oh yeah, okay, here, here's the green lights. So basically now we have dark green flashing lights. Now we're going to do three times in the vertical plane. There we go. So now we have a steady on. So we got steady green in the back uh, to the rear of the aircraft and steady red to the front of the aircraft. Okay. So that's kind of the uh, setup there. And we've got our phone hooked up. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're in uh, GPS mode here, uh, which is good. We've got 16 satellites. It does take a little while for the satellites to hook up. You don't want to be taken off without having a good number of satellites on there because it won't be uh, very stable, if that's what you're going for. Uh, there's our, um, this is our battery level on the quadcopter itself. And I've already done one little flight here, so uh, it's down a little bit. That's the transmitter. And uh, we're ready to go at this point. Um, just a, a comment on the, uh, the GPS mode. Uh, for flying off the boat, this could be potentially a problem in that when the uh, the quadcopter loses signal with the controller, it's going to go ahead and return to its home point. Or you can tell it to do it uh, by this button over here, the home button, hitting that button, and it's going to want to return to home. On a boat, that's a moving position, so you don't want it returning to some place on the water where there was a boat uh, prior. Uh, so that could be problematic. Having said that, this is going to stabilize the quadcopter. And when we get to flying the DJI, DJI Phantom off the boat, uh, we're going to figure out um, how to do that. There is a way to, to uh, keep it GPS stabled and not have it return to its previous home. So we'll be learning how to do that. Okay, so um, that's the kind of the initial stabilization. We're ready to go ahead and fly the uh, quadcopter. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, hit the unlock button here. So that's going to start the... Uh, blade spinning and you can either take it off by uh, just go ahead and like you normally would this would be your throttle over here on the left hand side you can ramp up the power to have it take off or you there's an automatic takeoff uh, button so we'll go ahead and show that to you okay here and obviously this is going to be your stick uh, uh, your uh, pitch and, and yaw um, uh, stick so uh, pitch it forward pitch it back yaw to the side 
or roll to the side, um, uh, roll to uh, uh, port and starboard, and uh, and as far as to turn the uh, the aircraft to yacht, you, you're going to do it uh, with this controller here, um, port and starboard. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll hit the go, go ahead and hit the uh, takeoff button here. Take her out here a little bit. Just off the deck here. And let's see how she's doing. I'm going to take her down so we can see it. So just bouncing her down a little bit here with the, with the, with the throttle. Okay. Pretty stable. Let's nudge her forward a little bit. Um, not a lot of breeze today, so it's nice and calm and clear out. Kind of see us there hovering real nice. Let's go ahead and activate. You can see what's on the screen here, so I'm going to activate the camera. And you can do that by uh, just hitting it here on the smartphone. There's also a camera button over here that we can uh, utilize to take photos or uh, to take videos. Okay. Sinking a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's a uh, little side to side action there. And a little forward. So we'll fly a box here. Let's just fly a simple box and see how it does. Okay, stabilizing. It's going to try and bring it back. I got my got my hands off the controls right now. Okay, it's kind of come back to that point. Now we're going to slide to the uh, left here. There we go. And letting her stabilize, kind of, you know, let the GPS bring her back to uh, the position. Coming back a little bit. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera for a moment. Alright, so let's sidle over here this way. Nice. Alright. So I'm going to bring her up just a little bit. And we're going to come back into a landing sort of spot. For, so one thing about uh, operating on the boat is I need to be able to bring it into a very tight space. And I'll show you a picture of that where we brought it into the cockpit. I tried to land on the forward, uh, on the uh, bow of the boat. I got a lot of room up there on the bow of the boat, but uh, boy, there's just, you know, it's up high and if it slides off, it's going to slide right over the side into the water. So not too comfortable with that. There's no, there's no uh, uh, gunnels up there to capture the, uh, the quadcopter. I caught it by hand um, the first time I did it and that was okay, except for I did manage to, to nick a finger and, and cut it a little bit. No big deal. It didn't, didn't hurt me real bad. So let's just bring this in for landing here on the table. But uh, I think hand catching is it's doable, but not great. Much better to, to be able to land it. And I have a big, reasonably good sized cockpit that's relatively clear. So being able to get in there and then drop power is going to be key. So there you see, I have the uh, uh, holding the uh, throttle in the downward position for about three seconds. Going to go ahead and turn the uh, uh, the motors off and put it into the lock mode. So there's kind of just a real brief review flight uh, of the uh, Bugs 2. Okay, we're out there flying away. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you the return to home function. So let's just try that out. So I'm going to go ahead and tell her to return to home. So the aircraft is now rising. It's going to come up uh, a ways there maybe too far for you to see there um, and it's going to start to return to home now one of the nice things about this is you can control it because it's going to return to home as best it can but it doesn't have obstacle avoidance say like the DJI does so um, there she is right up above us hopefully you can see that and you can kind of take control of it as she comes down so I don't want to hit the roof of the house here so I can actually control it a little bit as it comes back. So here, I'm going to give it a little stick to the uh, left. And then we're going to move her forward a little bit here so we can hit the table. So this is going to be uh, return to home, but you get a little bit of override control here. And we're going to get it right over the table. Whoa. And 
So, um, one thing about this, pretty rugged. So I just crashed it there, coming back into the uh, table in the return to home mode. And uh, I wasn't quite good enough to get it right back on the table there. And uh, no damage. Uh, just maybe a little bit of a little scuff marks on the propeller there. Um, but it still looks pretty good. Don't see any kind of weirdness going on there. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna bring it in manually. Oh, it's giving me the red uh, lights there, telling me, hey, your battery's low, dummy. So, and it gives me a beep. So we're gonna go ahead and bring her in. So just... So probably one thing you'd wanna do in a situation like this is, is uh, on the home to mode, uh, return to home mode there is to uh, go ahead and tell it to cease and desist, and then you bring it in. Cause you're gonna have way better, you know, it. it that way you have full control. All right, and dropping it in there. So the key there, of course, always is patience. Uh, just like in boating, uh, slow is pro. And so there you have it, the quadcopter complete with a, a little uh, crash demonstration. And uh, look at that. Um, I don't see any damage to this thing at all. This is my second little crash. Um, but that's the thing about it. It's a practice drone. Uh, so you want to be able to get out there and do some practicing with it to include the inevitable crash. All right. Look at that. Looks pretty decent. Okay, here we're gonna try and land it in forward. So the trick here, of course, is uh, you gotta fly the thing backwards. So you gotta imagine yourself. You've gotta uh, kind of superimpose yourself into the imaginary cockpit of the uh, of the quadcopter. So you've gotta pretend like you're the helicopter pilot. So I'm thinking about myself inside the bug there, looking out those bug eye windows. And uh, I'm, okay, so we're gonna move ourselves forward, get ourselves over the table. And it looks like we're pretty good there. And bringing it down, we're drifting off. No worries, we're gonna come forward. And I'm gonna saddle to the left. My right, of course, and there we are. Boop. And a little bit harder to do, takes more practice.